we're standing here today on a project where we've actually demoed a house. We're getting ready to build a new house back. But as we demoed the house and then we started moving down the hill, I guess, and cleaning up everything else, we really started taking a look at the dock and the seawall with our client. And we realized that there was a sidewalk down here that was existing on top of the old seawall. And that, and that sidewalk was made out of pea gravel, but it was really busted up and cracked. So I called the client and she came out here and we talked about it and this, the, you know, now's the time, I told her, now's the time to take this out if we are ever going to, because we have equipment sitting here. We had a Mini X, we had a jack camera, we had all the things in place to handle the basement demo to take care of the seawall. So the decision was made to, yes, um, let's push forward with getting that resolved. And so we start taking out the sidewalk and the next thing you know, the, the old seawall just starts falling apart. So this seawall was probably put back in, it was probably put in somewhere in like the 60s. And back then all they were using was just hollow uh, CMU block. So they weren't, it wasn't filled solid with concrete. It wasn't uh, reinforced with rebar. It just a open cell um, CMU block. And it was crumbling. The, the sidewalk that was capping it was actually hollow underneath. There was no backfill remaining holding that sidewalk up. And what happens, I figured this out by talking with some guys that have been in the marine business for a long time, is that muskrats actually find ways to dig under the footers as they start eroding over time and they actually make dens underneath that sidewalk. And so over time with water coming in and coming out, plus the muskrats, you end up with a big hollow spot underneath the sidewalk on top of these seawalls, which eventually starts to cause uh, the collapse of the sidewalk and the failure of the whole system. So fast forward, um, we decided to take the, the seawall out and start over fresh. Well, the problem was we had two weeks before TVA raised the water level back up. So time was of the essence to get started. And luckily we had our basement contractor um, already here or already mobilizing to this job site for our basement. And so we were able to divert the attention from the basement walls down to the seawall with that contractor. And so we were able to get the footers dug pretty quick, uh, get, that, get all this cleaned up. I had to demo part of the dock we were able to get the footers dug with a Mini X, which that was in, its, by, in itself, having a Mini X this close to the bank, hanging off into the water is, is just wild to see. But they were able to get that footer dug and, and when they poured it, that was probably one of the most fascinating things about the seawall is that they actually took rock and piled up on the backside of the footer and it almost created like a wave break, a protection from that footer. And then when they poured it, they started on one end and as they were pumping the concrete into that footer, all the water just starts evacuating. It pushes, it pushed the water out of the form and out of the footer um, as it cured. And I thought that, or as it was poured, it pushed that water out. And that was really, really wild to see how that worked. And then once that footer was poured, I think literally the next day, the water level has, had came up enough that it was already covering the footer. So they got the footer in just in the right time. And then from there, it's a pretty normal um, poured wall construction at that point. So, you know, they set our forms, they put in our drain pipes, all the rebar, and now we have a poured 10 inch wall um, seawall. So with a much bigger footer with a lot more rebar in it than what was here originally. So I think it's safe to say if the last seawall lasted, well, somewhere in the 60 year mark, this should be more of a hundred plus year seawall um, based off how it was built today versus how it was built 60 years ago. But you know, I think one thing as a builder we need to talk about, you know, this, this was not our scope. This was not our, our, I guess you could say it's not our, it wasn't our job to, to handle this seawall. But the decision was made to, to tell the client and consult with them about it because, you know, as a builder, you're responsible for your client's investment in their project. And this is one of those things that had we not done it now, and they had to wait even two years from now and handle it from the water via barge, this project would have probably cost them two to three times as much money at that point as it did while we're doing the house. And it's just because we can access it by land, we can haul this concrete out, we can bring gravel in, we can bring concrete in, and all of that is done uh, from the access we've made coming down the hill to this seawall versus after the fact, it all has to be done by barge. So we, we definitely um, hated to, to make this 
project costs this much more money with an investment like this for a seawall, but ultimately it's going to save our clients money in the long run and they're definitely going to have a better project going forward. So um, after this backfill is done with this um, seawall, and I guess speaking of backfill, we should probably talk about that. So backfill um, was done back in the 60s when they built this wall originally with just dirt, debris, whatever they could find it looks like uh, or it looked like to backfill that wall with. But I mentioned the muskrats and so, so what we're doing today is we're going to be backfilling this with number two limestone and, and that will be totally backfilled up to where our concrete slab is going to be. So uh, it's going to be impossible for that number two stone to wash out like the old backfill did and hopefully prevent any muskrats from making a home in our new seawall. So in this process of getting these clients a new seawall, one thing we decided to do was actually to make the cart path that's coming along here widen out behind the boat dock that's existing down here. Because what's gonna happen, that, that's gonna create a pretty large entertainment space for a table, for a fire pit, for several options there. Because the view from this lake lot is actually incredible down here by the dock. And that's a view that they're not able to capture from their house. So by creating a larger space down by the dock, they're going to be able to enjoy that for years to come. Working on lake properties, and this is something that we've had to become really good at, is handling water. All right, so water management. So normally on a flat plain or like a, a normal residential lot in the subdivision, not as much concern, but when you're dealing with the, the topography that we have here on the lake and everything is on such a grade going down to the water, you have to consider how to handle all the water from things like your driveway, your pool decks, and your gutters and how that's going to get away from the house and not cause bad erosion problems. So one thing that we've really started doing on lake properties is running larger pipes through our seawalls all the way back up to the house. And that's where we tie in all those surface drains around the pools, all of our gutters, any water falling down from the driveway and trying to get that water into a pipe and get it back to the river without causing erosion along the way. And that's a really big thing to consider uh, if you're working on the lake or even if you're, it's not the lake, if it's just a bad uh, grade where you're working, you really have to put extra thought into how to capture that water to not cause problems. So where I'm standing is actually going to be another retaining wall and that's going to be capturing the, obviously the dirt behind it, but that's going to create the space for uh, the cart path down there at the seawall. But that wall is going to capture a lot of water coming down the hill. And so similar to a basement French drain or a basement uh, perimeter drain, we'll have that behind this wall where I'm standing Obviously, it'll be backfilled with gravel that will allow nice drainage into that pipe and that will then divert out to these larger pipes that I'm talking about that will go through the seawall and create a really nice way for water to escape and hopefully cause no erosion problems. If you're a builder and a seawall is in your future, make sure that you consult with the guys that really have experience doing this. We were fortunate enough to be able to call one of our partners that do a lot of marine construction like seawalls and docks, and we're able to get advice from him on how to go forward with this project in such a small timeline. And then we really depended on our poured wall basement contractor, our poured wall contractor, to come in and execute the actual wall part for us. So anyway, I hope you learned a little bit about seawalls. It's really a fascinating process. If you're not already following us on Instagram, please go do so. It's at Will King Builds. And just remember, iron sharpens iron, so keep grinding, keep watching these videos, and we'll see you right here on The Build Show.